This is the last and arguably the most entertaining video of our how-to series. Today we're going to perform a static test on our rocket and then do the actual launch. The reason you want to do a static test before actually launching a rocket if you can help it is because you want to make sure that your recovery system will work properly. The last thing you want to happen is to launch your rocket only to find out that your recovery system won't eject and your rocket that you worked so hard on crashes and is destroyed. Performing a static test before doing a launch can prevent such things from happening. And all you need to do to perform a static test is to secure your rocket to an immovable object outside somewhere away from people. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, at face value that test looked like a success, so let's replay in slow-mo so we can get the full details. Again, even slower, we're going to take this frame by frame. Obviously, we have complete ejection of the piston from the rocket. You can see at first that the drogue chute is sandwiched between the nose cone and the piston as expected. About halfway out, the nose cone turns off to the side, allowing the drogue chute to fully pull away from the piston and unravel itself inflating, but then the nose cone rolls back over the drogue lines, entangling it with its shock cord. And although the drogue chute does inflate, it prevents the drogue chute from fully ejecting the main chute from the piston. However, the piston rolls over and the main chute does eventually fall away from the piston. I consider this static test a success because there was enough force from the C engine to fully eject our recovery system. I believe the entanglement issue was a direct result from firing the recovery system at a horizontal angle. So with that, we move on to the launch. Five, four, three, two, one. And the parachute has deployed. We have a successful launch. The flight was a nice parabola. And we have touchdown. Let's go back and zoom in on the deployment of the recovery system. And again, zooming in and slowing it down. All right, let's take it frame by frame. Here you can see the plume of smoke from the ejection. That green arrow is pointing to the nose cone and piston. Okay, so the red arrow is pointing to the rocket, the orange arrow is pointing to the piston, and the green arrow is pointing to the nose cone. Now we know that the drogue chute is somewhere in between the green and the orange arrow. Okay, the rocket is coming back towards the nose cone and piston, and in this frame, the elastic shock cord slams the back of the rocket into the front. In the very next frame, the white arrow points to the drogue chute, so we know that made it out. The purple arrow is pointing to where the main chute would be. The orange arrow is pointing to the nose cone and piston, and the red arrow to the rocket. And the purple arrow is pointing to the main chute, and there you have it, it unfolded. Everything worked as it was designed to. The drogue chute did end up successfully deploying the main chute away from the piston. This is a picture of the touchdown. You can see an altimeter inside the piston. I actually put that in there before the launch, and it reached 261 feet. Now this is the altitude when the recovery system ejected. This is not its apogee. I know this because the SD altimeter relies on a change of pressure to get its readings, and it only gets a change of pressure when the system ejects. To find the apogee or total height of the rocket, we take 1 half times 9.8, which is the force of gravity, and times that by 9, which is 3 to the second power, or how many seconds the rocket fell before its deployment. Now the C engine did have a 5 second delay, but for the first 2 seconds actually continued to climb. Let's watch the launch one more time. Okay, and to commemorate the debut launch of my rocket, I'm going to put a tally at the very top as an indication of a successful launch. And for each additional successful launch, I will put another tally. Thanks for taking part in the series, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Fly safe, and God bless.